Good evening and welcome. This is probably the 165th event of CIC. And we are thankful to all of you for having supported us through difficult times. So last few sessions have been held in various colleges and we found a new enthusiastic response from the younger uh, demographics who have been taking part in our discussions quite spiritedly and we thought we'll come back now, back to the pavilion as they say, back to the Madras School of Economics. Uh, so this session would be on startup Tamil Nadu and this is a session which has been suggested by our members. So thank you for the suggestion and thank you to all the uh, panelists who have readily agreed to come and speak in this forum. Let me start with Sucharita. Now, Sucharita is a passionate about good finance for all. She is the co-founder and CEO of Kaleidofin, a neo bank that provides intuitive and tailored financial solutions to cover a million unbanked customers in India. Prior to this, she co-founded the IFMR Group and most recently was the group CEO of IFMR Holdings. She conceptualized and founded Northern Arc Capital, Building Capital Markets, Access for Financial Inclusion, and Northern Arc Investments, an alternative fund management platform focused on the informal sector finance. Sucharita has recently chosen as a young global leader by the World Economic Forum. She was chosen as one of the top 40 under 40 business leaders by Economic Times in 2016 and received the IIM Ahmedabad Young Alumni Achievers Award in 2017. Prior to her move to India, Sucharita was an investment banker at Morgan Stanley and Deutsche Bank in London, working primarily on credit derivatives, structuring and sales. She graduated with an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad and holds an undergraduate degree in economics for, from LSR Delhi University. Put your hands together. <laughs> Sucharita, please. Please join us here, please. Thank you. It's my pleasure to welcome my colleague, Arun Roy, alumnus of the National Law School from where he got his LLB Bangalore. He belongs to the 2003 batch of the IAS, present posting is Secretary, Medium and Small Enterprises Department with additional charges as Secretary Expenditure and CEO of TN Infrastructure Fund Management Corporation. His previous positions include Special Secretary Industries Department, Special Officer Global Investors Meet 2019, Deputy Secretary Budget, MD Metrowater, Commissioner Differently Abled Welfare and Collector of Krishnagiri and Ramnathapuram Districts. Welcome Arun and uh, on a personal note, one of the finest officers of the Tamil Nadu Kada. And it's a pleasure that he has agreed to join us here. We have Chandu Nair. To introduce Chandu Nair, he works with entrepreneurs and enterprises on how to create and build their business. He has direct experience in angel, VC and strategic investor funding and has been a part of a few exits too. He also has three decades of experience in industry, consultancy, media, and information services. He has worked previously in Asian Paints and Business World magazine. Thereafter, he has been an entrepreneur for 25 plus years and started several businesses, of which he managed to exit two, including Scope eKnowledge Center. He is on the advisory board of Fulcrum, a Chennai-based private equity firm, and Mantera, a social impact fund. He is an independent director on the board of India's first retail building products company, Shankara Building Products Limited. He is actively engaged with the Chennai Angels, IIM Cori Code, Live Incubator, and Crescent Innovation and Incubation Council. He also writes on startups and entrepreneurship in money control and business line. He is a postgraduate in management from IIM Ahmedabad. He is also a visiting faculty at IIM Cori Code, IIM Indoor, etc. Welcome, Mr. Chandu. And to put this session together, we have as our moderator, K. Ramakrishnan, or Ramki as he is popularly known, who is the Senior Managing Director of Strategic Relationships 
at Spark Capital Advisors India Private Limited. Ramki is a veteran Indian investment banker with more than three decades of experience across the entire spectrum of corporate finance and investment banking. Ramki has advised leading business groups, entrepreneurs, and corporates in raising capital from Indian and overseas capital markets and from private equity investors. He has led, advised, and consummated a significant number of M&A transactions, both domestic and cross-border. As part of the founding leadership at Spark Capital, Ramki has actively led and contributed to the growth and transformation of Spark Capital from an advisory boutique to a leading mid-market full-service investment bank. Prior to Spark Capital, Ramki headed ICICI Securities investment banking business for Southern India, before which he had stints at the Arthur Anderson uh, Industrial Global Finance Trust and Deloitte. Among his other commitments, Ramki presently serves on the Executive Committee of the Chennai Angels, is a charter member of the Thai Chennai and a founding fellow of the Chennai International Centre. He is on the General Committee of the Madras Chamber and has been a member of the Managing Committee of the Madras Management Association. He regularly serves on committees and working groups of CII Southern Region. He is a mechanical engineer with a postgraduate degree in management. Welcome, Ramki. So over to you, Ramki, to handle the rest of the evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you, panelists, once again for accepting our invitation to be with us. Uh, just a few housekeeping announcements before we take a plunge into the panel. Uh, we hope to complete this in about 90 minutes and uh, let you get home to watch the match at the one Uh It will be a free-flowing discussion. We have no specific formats. Uh, happy to take any questions from the audience should you have anything to stop us somewhere in between to make it a little more interactive and lively. Uh, before we get to the substantive portion of the discussion, which is about startups in Tamil Nadu, there is an interesting, uh, startup is all about stories and storytelling and pitching uh, the proposition to a larger audience. There's a very interesting story which is getting crafted in what is often considered the epicenter of startup Chennai, which is the IIT Research Park. And uh, we, <coughs> We have the author of that story sitting next to me. So I thought, uh, with your permission, gentlemen, I'll let the lady first talk a little about Kaleidofin, uh, about uh, where she started, how she has built it, and then maybe we can take a plunge into the more substantive part of the discussion. Over to you, Sucharita. Uh, thank you so much, and thanks for this opportunity to speak at this eminent forum. Um, so, uh, you know, l let me tell you the story uh, and get to Kaleidofin, uh, you know, probably somewhere in the middle of the story of how, uh, you know, Chennai came to be, um, uh, you know, the headquarters for uh, all the startups uh, that we've been associated with. Uh, so I was, uh, I started my career in investment banking uh, at Morgan Stanley and Deutsche Bank, but as, uh, you know, I finished about, uh, you know, let's say, eight, nine years, I started to feel uh, a sense of emptiness, a sense of, um, uh, you know, meaninglessness of, uh, you know, what is, what is the purpose of my life and uh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, I started exploring with, um, you know, social work as well as entrepreneurship with a very wide range of um, uh, people, including a few people in Chennai. Uh, and, uh, and at that point of time, uh, you know, I thought to myself that I definitely don't want to be in Bombay. I had already worked in Bombay before. No offense uh, meant to people from Bombay, but I felt like, okay, uh, you know, I felt like somehow that would be too drastic a move. And then uh, I bumped into Dr. Nachiket Moore. Uh, who's also an alumnus uh, of IMA, uh, and he was uh, starting this uh, fantastic group called IFMR Trust, uh, which then went on to promote uh, three or four uh, very important uh, institutions for financial inclusion today, one of which was IFMR Capital, uh, which I co-founded. Uh, and, um, you know, and I came here uh, not knowing a soul, uh, in Chennai, uh, and uh, and I have to say that uh, 
and almost everybody at IFMR uh, who came in was largely an outsider uh, into Chennai. So, uh, so our work and our social circles were exactly the same. Uh, but soon, you know, within um, a few months, uh, we loved the city. Uh, I had no idea why people, uh, you know, even criticized the city so much. And sure, you know, there were some issues like the language barrier and it takes a little bit of time to get used to it, but the people were gentle, cultured. Uh, there was the beach, uh, you know, who could ask for more in some sense. It was safe for women. Um, and that's a very, very important uh, thing, especially for Indian women. And uh, as a, you know, Indian startup entrepreneur, you definitely want to be in a safe city. Um, and, uh, you know, I have to tell you that all of us, and we were, you know, Punjabis, Bengalis, Gujaratis, people from all over the country, we fell in love with Chennai. And we, uh, uh, you know, we decided that uh, even though we had originally based ourselves in Chennai because we got free office space, it wasn't a much more involved decision than that. But we decided to continue. Uh, because everyone really liked it. Uh, we could also hire fantastic talent here. Um, our attrition rates were very low. We found also that we could motivate uh, people here, something to do perhaps with the culture, with the upbringing, to a higher cause, a cause higher than themselves. That, that's, that was somehow relatively simpler. People were less cynical. There was still some idealism left. And, and that's how, you know, we created a few wonderful institutions, uh, IFMR Capital, IFMR Rural Channel. Somewhere along the way, um, uh, you know, I got bitten by the tech bug. I was a totally non-tech person. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of excitement around the India stack um, and the possibilities uh, it could bring to the fore, uh, especially for um, financial solutions to bottom of the pyramid customers. We also knew that technology could mean that we could now provide financial services at a dramatically lower cost uh, to deliver, cost to serve. You know, today financial services, uh, it costs almost, uh, you know, five to seven percent just to deliver the uh, the finance. Now, and all of that cost is actually borne by the customer, right? Uh, and therefore, technology, data science, uh, uh, every single person having a mobile phone, this meant that you could dramatically reduce that cost and include so many more people. Uh, and, uh, and I personally got obsessed with that dream. We had a branch-based model, and we had very similar cost structures. We provided better quality of financial services, but you know the cost was what it was. Uh, you can't, you can only economize on staff uh, this much, right? But here was a chance uh, to uh, set up something from scratch uh, that could one uh, deliver at a much lower cost, and two uh, deliver at an unprecedented scale as well. So initially, we would thinking about, you know, thousands of customers, maybe hundreds of thousands of customers. But uh, with Aadhaar, uh, as well as uh, with pretty much ubiquitous mobile phone and bank account penetration, we could dream of reaching millions of customers in a matter of a few years. And this is because fundamentally, you know, I'm trained in finance and I'm sure many of the audiences as well, I believe that finance is a tremendous force for good. Um, and it just has to be harnessed, it has to be available. Uh, Professor Amartya Sen talks about, you know, the theory of entitlements that everybody has to have uh, capabilities, right? And those capabilities, uh, you know, you only get equality when each of us have an equal chance. Finance, in that sense, is like a fundamental capability. If you don't have that, then you can't set up that business. You can't send your daughter to college. You can't grow your family. You can't grow your human capital and therefore fulfill your life's dreams and aspirations. But the thing is, the converse is also true. So that's why we set up Kaleidofin. 
uh, to really realize, um, uh, you know, millions of customers' dreams, lives, and aspirations through finance. And we decided uh, to do away with branches completely. Uh, you know, we have only two offices, one in Chennai, uh, one in Bangalore, and uh, we impact about uh, two and a half million customers today. Um, uh, you know, we devised a financial health assessment model uh, to really think about what do customers want, uh, what are their goals, lives, dreams, aspirations, and uh, deliver them the tailored financial solution that they need. Uh, so our solutions combine savings, credit, and insurance in exactly the right proportions that the customer needs. Almost like a wealth management approach, but it's really not available. Uh, so that, I will stop here. Yes, 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 thank you. So I will pause you there and we will keep coming back to the Kaleido Finn story as we touch upon other aspects of the discussion. So if there is one startup which is... Uh, getting incubated at IIT Research Park, there is another startup which is grabbing the headlines. And the gentleman at the helm of it is sitting uh, next to me, which is Startup Tamil Nadu, right? Uh, and for the last probably a couple of years, we have seen Startup Tamil Nadu in a you know, significant amount of hyperactive mode. Uh, so uh, Arun, what's the Startup Tamil Nadu story all about? Uh, you're, you talk of initiatives, you talk of events, you talk of funding. Uh, and, and you talk of taking it beyond uh, the city. So we're going to be talking about all of that over the next probably hour or so. But at a headline level, uh, how do you see Startup Tamil Nadu at the helm of it all? Thank you, CIC. It's always a privilege to talk to such an esteemed uh, audience. Startup Chain is a very, uh, is quite a young organization. It's about uh, two to three years old. If I have to summarize in a nutshell what Startup TN looks to do, or it's rather its ma major objectives, it will be two to three. First is numbers. As everyone in this room knows, whenever we talk about anything got to do with industrial economy, Tamil Nadu usually ranks in the first two, uh, one, or one, two, or three. Unfortunately, that is not the case when we talk about the startup ecosystem in the, uh, in the country. I mean, uh, that was very intriguing to all of us in, in government. It was intriguing to, I'm sure, most of you in the audience here also. So we wanted to change that. We wanted uh, Tamil Nadu to be part of the national startup story, which means we should encourage more and more in, uh, people to come into the startup field, st uh, begin businesses uh, relying, which relying on technology and innovation. So that's a quantity part of the story. But that's only part of it. We also want the startup story to be very inclusive. Uh, by inclusive, I, what I mean is uh, inclusivity in multiple dimensions. First of all, geographical inclusivity. If you see uh, what has happened to the way the startup system has evolved in many parts of this country, many cities of the country. Uh, it, it is confined to the city. It is not, it is not gone beyond the city. It has not gone beyond Bangalore. It has not gone beyond Pune or the Delhi Noida region. And all state governments, uh, all those state governments are today realizing that. Similarly, we also want the, the, the startup ecosystem to be something which goes beyond uh, Chennai. So uh, uh, we want tier two, tier three uh, people, uh, youngsters from these two, these cities and rural areas to be also part of the uh, the uh, the startup ecosystem. Uh, the other dimension would be caste. Caste in industrial development. That the fact that you know people from some communities are not able to really break into businesses is, a, is an elephant in the room. So that uh, the caste inclusivity was another matter of uh, concern. Third is gender. Uh, the low number of uh, women who are doing starting businesses uh, in the state. For this sector, when we talk about uh, startups, what really comes to our mind for all of us is deep technology, or financial technology, and so on. But when Ideally, when you're talking about 
startup is not just technology, it's innovation. So it need not be, it has to happen in areas like climate technology, uh, agri-tech, femtech, rural technologies, uh, uh, and so on, where the, the, the traditional story of a startup of you know, starting, then scaling up, a VC coming in and uh, uh, taking stakes, and then using that money to scale up, that may not work. Because uh, some of those businesses are, may not be scalable at all. But it might still make money. So that uh, inclusivity was a matter of uh, concern. So this is another aspect we were concentrating on. A third pillar, so one is number, second is inclusivity. The third pillar for us is coordination. We also found that uh, a lot of government departments are actually doing something or the other which helps startups. For example, SIP in Industries Department has been creating incubation center. Tidal has been starting incubation centers. Chennai Corporation had a startup incub uh, incubation center. But there was no coherent story. So somebody had to bring all these uh, efforts together and uh, present to the, uh, the national media, to the national government, the international audience, that this is what is happening uh, in Tamil Nadu. So these are the probably the three things uh, we focus uh, would be the three main objectives that TN is working on and has, is planning to work on. And for each of these, there are levers which probably I'll cover when as we... Thanks, thanks Arun. I think that's the whole idea. Uh, just for the benefit of the audience, to put some of what Arun said in perspective in hard, cold numbers. Uh, the country attracted 46 billion across private equity deals, uh, across 12,261 private equity deals as per Venture Intelligence Report in 2022. South India attracted 16.8 billion out of that 46 billion. And Chennai attracted 2.6 billion across 61 deals out of that 16.8 billion. So we are talking of 15% of South Indian deals by value and about 11% of South Indian deals by number. So it's obviously not an encouraging uh, sign, right? Uh, there is something, something that is going wrong. Chandu, you have seen it for long, right? Uh, I mean, you are one of the original gangster entrepreneurs, right? Uh, and uh, you have done that, you have built it, you have scaled, you have sold, you have done all of that. Uh, so, where is the missing link and, and what are we trying to solve here? I mean, Arun is obviously has a hard task in his hand and he is doing his best to try and, you know, make the engine move. But where is the destination? What are the problems along the way as you see it? Let me first uh, start off by saying something very interesting about this composition of this panel. <laughs> Okay, which is that we are talking of startup TN. I too am an accidental entrepreneur like Sucharita, happened to come to Chennai and then stayed on in Chennai. Now the three people on this panel talking about developing entrepreneurship in Chennai are non-Tamilians. Okay, you have a Bengali and two Malayalis. The Malayali Dangerous. A Malayali Hindu. Now for me, that's the remarkable yeah. part about Tamil Nadu, yeah. that it has always been welcoming. You are on the left. Of, of, the, of the outside influence, okay. And I think we have to recognize that first. That's so one of the good things is that it's welcoming. Uh, I see some of that eroding. In the last few years, I feel there has been an erosion of some of that. And some of the rhetoric, in my view, has not been very conducive in attracting outside talent and entrepreneurs. Okay, uh, It's a bit like the Singapore situation. Now, I asked my friend once in Singapore, Alok, why didn't you take a U-turn at this place? You know, you could have taken it. He said, uh, look, there is no U-turn sign out there. So I said, but you know, in India, we would take a U-turn. So he said, Chandu, India and Hong Kong are not like Singapore. In Singapore, unless something is expressly allowed, it is forbidden. In India, unless something is expressly forbidden, it is allowed. So entrepreneurship is a bit like that. Okay. But in Tamil Nadu, I feel one of the things we have to do, missing link is attract a lot of talent from anywhere in the globe be it Tamil, be it non-Tamil, whatever. And I think we have to make it a lot more welcoming for anybody to come and set up shop. That, I think for that, I think both the political establishment and the hotheads here have to be reined in. Okay. I'm being maybe politically incorrect, but I think somebody has to state it and that's one of the things I feel which is required. The other thing, I think in terms of mindset, I think uh, Tamil Nadu, because I've seen it happen. When I first went to get uh, venture funding many years ago for a knowledge-related business, 
uh, most companies and banks and everybody, most the, first of all, there were no funds, hardly anybody. There was an odd SIDB, one UTI ventures, etc. So anything which was uh, intangible was frowned upon because they couldn't understand where the value creation was happening. So I think even in the ecosystem here, especially in the, among the bureaucrats, I think Arun is a welcome change because he's a lawyer turned uh, you know, bureaucrat. So everything for him is intangible. Like I think the former finance minister said once when he was asked why you didn't put service tax on lawyers, he asked what service do lawyers provide? <laughs> <laughs> so something similar, I think, I think we need an understanding of the mindset that intangible things can contribute more. I'll come to it a little later, but just to give you an example, we have the Hosur, Dharma, Dharmapuri, Krishnagiri belt, where we are very happy that we have attracted tremendous amount of electron, I mean, electric vehicle investment. But the key thing which we are not talking about is that design engineering technology is all being done out of Bangalore. Here we are very happy we are generating jobs of 15, 20,000 rupees per person and generating 30,000 rupees, 30,000 employment. But you know, Volvo has a 1,800 people center in Bangalore. The starting salaries are 8 to 10 lakhs. So I think we have to go from a mindset which is from tangible sea touch feel to the more intangible. Secondly, consciously go after value added kind of things, okay? Number three, I think we have to make ourselves more visible. I think this uh, Tamilian and uh, Chennai thing of being very, you know, hiding our strengths is uh, pathetic. You know, we, we, should, we should be a little more like Shah Rukh Khan. Go out there and tell them, boss, if I got Patan or something, I'll go all out and blast. Even if the film, I don't know how much it made. But we should make a bigger noise, you know. So we must do a little more, uh, what should I say, projection. I, for, one sec, for one, I cannot understand why none of the global leaders, even those who hail from Tamil Nadu, don't come here and talk openly. A Satya Nalala goes and talks in Hyderabad. But our chappy, I won't name him, comes and puts one small topi and goes quietly to Mahabalipuram. So we have to make sure our global leaders come and talk, you know, and make Tamil Nadu and Chennai a destination of choice. We have a lot of good things going. I think we'll talk about it as we go along. But if I were to say at a very high level, you know, these are some of the things that we have to really do. Uh, we have a good set of bureaucrats. I don't think any state has got the kind of bureaucrats we have. And it's been something that we have had for many years. We have one uh, ex extremely good example right in front of us. And we have, you know, a pretty good, I think, some, somewhat sensible politicians who think of a larger social good, whatever names they give for that, uh, the scheme of things. But I think we bring the private sector also, you know, we be become a little more, we have this in India, the fourth point I'll make, which is, a, which is across the country, we've always been a little more wary of business, you know, and businessmen and making profits. It, business is not a bad word, profit making is not a bad word. If you can get that mindset also out of the way, treat, you know, a lot of us as partners. I'm very happy that, you know, with people like Shivaraja and Arun at the helm, there is a greater attempt right from day one of Startup TN to include a whole lot of people from the ecosystem, whether it's the incubators, whether it's private sector, whether it's funders, whether it's industrialists. This, I think, should be the path forward. Fantastic. Thanks, Shandu. I can always count on you for humor. Uh, uh, I'm the knowledge way track. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, we have spoken about a lot of things, a lot of words have been said here, right? We, Arun mentioned about uh, funding, numbers, inclusivity, taking it beyond Tamil Nadu sector, etc., etc. And, uh, you know, Chandu spoke about tangible, value-added, visible. So, over the course of probably the next 45 minutes, maybe, uh, we will try and, you know, double-click on each of these things. Uh, Arun, I want to pick funding. I mean, obviously, that's closest to my heart and I'm probably more familiar with it. So, it's easier for me to talk about it, right? Uh, there are about five funds from what I understand that come under the ambit of startup T and a few more are being planned. Like you have your seed fund, you have the uh, you know, SEST fund, you have a fund which is there for inclusion. You have a fund that is there for inclusion and you are thinking of a few more. Uh, you know, sometimes I get a very, I get a little confused. Uh, because on one side, uh, on my day job, scale is everything, right? Uh, and, and investors are seeking companies to build scale. The next round of funding happens if you have demonstrated a certain growth. So that's the mantra for success, right? Whatever pitfalls it might come with, right? And on the other hand, I find this five lakh check being returned, you know. So what is the capital are you providing? Are you providing motivational capital? 
Are you trying to evangelize entrepreneurship? Are you trying to give serious money to them in order to enable them to build scale? I, I get a little lost when I read this. So can you, can you help me understand and probably help the audience also understand that? If you ask me what is, we are certainly not uh, uh, providing the kind of capital a venture fund would uh, do. What we would be doing is first that encouragement capital followed by seed capital. So to, just to explain to the audience, uh, the, the, the funding arrangements we are having. One is a grant fund. It's called the uh, it, it, uh, it's called Tanseed program, which is operated by uh, Tanseed startup uh, startup team, which uh, invites applications from startups and gives a grant up to fifteen lakhs. It used to be ten lakhs, but for uh, certain sectors like uh, rural tech, women-led startups, now we have increased to fifteen lakhs. Every round there will be about, about around thousand applicants would be there. We have partners like uh, Head Start, which uh, who will uh, ETA and all who sort of uh, helps us to shortlist the, the applicants. And uh, the final round would be about 30 to 50 applicants will be there, out of which we select about 20 to 25. So this is the category of encouraging people who have, uh, who probably left a job to or decided to not to start working and uh, uh, start a startup. It's very important in one sense that because Tamil Nadu is uh, still a very conservative society as we pointed out. Our parents expect the child to start a job immediately. That campus recruitment is considered the, the peak of uh, a, a child's progress in uh, academics. So if it doesn't happen, the boy or the girl goes through a lot of, and the parent also, goes through a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of stress uh, within the family and in, in the society. So it's it's vital that we provide that money so that the, the boy or the girl can tell uh, her parents that, see, I, I made some money. I'm not at least going to be dependent on you. And there is possibility of more. I mean, it it keeps mouth shut maybe for a year or two till they can you know survive for some time. And so that's the purpose of uh, Tanseed. The next level would be to give a little more serious uh, money. There, the arrangement is uh, uh, primarily through a fund called Emerging Sector Seed Fund. Now, this fund is not operated by Startup TN. It is operated by an organization called TNIFMC, Tamil Nadu Infrastructure Fund Management Corporation. It's a fund promoted by TITCO, Tidal, and Government of uh, Tamil Nadu. Started with a corpus of uh, uh, 500 crore, as an aspirational corpus of uh, 500 crore. So far, we have raised uh, government has given us about 50 crore and uh, hoping to raise the rest from the, the private sector. We made investments uh, close to 15 crore from that fund and uh, there are about uh, 60 crore worth of uh, proposals under uh, evaluation. There the process is again an open application and uh, applicants come. There is an independent investment committee. None of us uh, uh, government officials don't take a uh, a decision on whether to give or not not to give. My role stops with arranging the investment committee uh, meetings uh, and probably attending them. The, that's all. But uh, they are all very investment, uh, the ind independent decisions. So that is the other level of funding we operate. Then on the inclusivity front, we have a fund called SCSC Startup Fund, which is now an 80 crore fund. But that's not a uh, SEBI registered alternate investment fund because we don't we are not planning to attract private money into that fund. It is going to be purely, so it's like a typical government fund. There again, about uh, 20 crore worth of investments have been uh, finalized. Two checks, we have issued checks for about uh, maybe four or five crores. Typically in this emerging sector seed fund and uh, SCST startup fund, the amount of money give ranges between one crore to seven crore. The, the lowest has been one crore, the highest so far has been seven crore. But nothing in our mandate stops us from giving even 50 crore or anything if there is a suitable there is a suitable proposal. So we operated uh, that early stage uh, funding. We believe that if we take them to a certain level, then uh, the VC should be then show interest and must be taking over. Thanks, thanks, Arun. Uh, you know, let me turn to Chandu there on that count, right? Uh, and and probably before we round up the funding subject, 
uh, I mean, you are an active angel investor, all of us as PCA. Do we get to see some of the TN funded uh, startups come there or is it early days or is there anything that you would like to share to the audience and probably to Arun from a late stage funding standpoint uh, in terms of what they want to, what they should be doing? I don't think we have as yet seen anybody coming. It's early days. It will, I think it will take a couple of years. I think to be fair, because I've been, I've been seeing Kesum, you know, Kerala State Startup Mission for some time. Uh, even after five years, uh, Kerala has barely got 93 million, I think, funding. The two over the last, I think, eight years, oh. if you were to look at it. I think the numbers from Inc. 42's latest report, I think, is barely less than 100 million. Whereas Tamil Nadu has been much higher at 4 billion or something, you know, in the same period. Of course, we are nowhere close to Bangalore in, in that sense. We are 115th or less. But I think what is important for us is to recognize that this is a 10-year effort. Okay, it's not, it's just the beginning. And it is going to take time for us to uh, figure out, you know, they are also trying to figure out the modalities. I am on the board of two, uh, I mean, on the advice, I'm sorry, you know, evaluation committees of two startup India seed funds, one with Crescent and one with IAMK Live Incubator. It's a painful process. You really are boiling the ocean, you know, at some, in one way. It's a painful process. I mean, Reggie is also here, so he knows, and there are others who are part of it. So it is, it is very challenging, right? to figure out exactly who's going to be that uh, pearl uh, in the oyster. Very tough to make out. And I think in, the, in this game of entrepreneurship it, and especially funding, we know that 8 out of 10 are not likely to make it and we operate with those odds. What do we look at as angels is we find there are many startups, okay, and very difficult for us to assess even whether that startup entrepreneur is he or she is serious about entrepreneurship. We come in at the valley of death, which is the first 18 to 24 months. The more that person is given support to traverse that valley of death, the more he is de-risked, he or she is de-risked, it encourages the angel investor, the early seed fund to start taking a closer look at it. So I think that way, this enabling ecosystem that, uh, that what uh, ta Tamil Nadu Startup uh, Fund, all the funds are aiming to provide, some of them, help considerably, you know, in making funders believe one, one, the following. One, that there's already been an evaluation of the startup. Number two, there's been a credentialing of the entrepreneur, a big challenge in India. You know, it's very difficult to credential an entrepreneur. So there's been some kind of credentialing because the government would have taken not just the Aadhaar and PAN, but much more. And, you know, <laughs> so, so we know that there's been a lot more social credentialing and you know other kinds of background credentialing. So to that extent, it reassures uh, an investor to look more closely at it. And we have also seen statistics to show that incubated startups or facilitated startups have a much greater chance of raising funding. So from all these points of view, these are early days, but I'm sure in the next three to five years, we'll see some of these bearing fruit, subject to the caveats being, like he said, we've seen Venture East was born out of APIDC's earlier- no, I'm just fund. coming to that, right? Uh, so you know, on, on the that. funding, I want to touch on a few more things, uh, Chandu and probably Arun. Uh, and, and I'll draw you into that conversation. Look, I, I can count with the fingers of my one hand the number of private equity guys sitting out of Chennai, right? Uh, Gopal is not here and, uh, you know, if he is there, he would probably put up his hand. Uh, but, you know, beyond Gopal and a few more, Arun I see sitting there uh, who runs, uh, you know, uh, Anaikat PE fund. But there is hardly any private equity guys sitting out of the city, right? And, and funding, like anything else in life, is about demand and supply. Uh, the uh, the Chennai corporate ecosystem is largely old wealth, right? Uh, unlike Bangalore, which is new wealth, and that wealth has been recycled. We do have some, you know, uh, gentle, uh, you know, gentlemen like Lakshmi who kind of catalyze and evangelize uh, startup funding in a very very active way. But for the most part, it's it's old wealth, right? So that that doesn't come into the startup ecosystem. So are we at some level also facing a challenge while you're doing what you're supposed to do at your level? And, you know, I see a lot of TCA members. I see uh, uh, Rajan here from Kiritsu Forum. There are a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, early stage investors. Are we running into some kind of, a you know, air pocket at the second stage? And, you know, once I get Chandu to probably mention, I want you to kind of uh, tell the audience your own experience because you have done... Uh, Two, if I am not mistaken, three rounds of funding, right? Uh, and what has been your experience? What has been the challenges? 
did being in Chennai, uh, was it a handicap in your fundraising exercise? Uh, that's something that I would like to hear from you. But Chandu, to this point, is there an air pocket? First and because foremost, something that Arun should know. Right? First as, and as foremost, I don't think there is enough air itself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about air pocket. Okay. Uh, so I'll tell you why. Let's look at some Inc. 42 numbers. I just did this because I wanted to understand what the numbers look like. Right. Now, if you take a city like Bangalore, uh, the number of investors was roughly 3,900 plus. Okay. Uh, in NCR, it is 3,400. In Mumbai, it is. 2800. Let's not reveal TCA secrets here. You know, cut, to, <laughs> cut to Chennai, stroke, it says for, it actually says Tamil Nadu. It's 563. Right. I mean, come on. Yeah. Number of investors. I mean, 563 people. In, yeah. It says 563 in a state of 7.5 crore. And we are right now at 290 billion GSDP kind of uh, kind of uh, state. Numbers, yeah. And we want to be 1 trillion in the next 7 years. Okay. Well, this is a joke. So that's why I said there's no air. Okay. Good. So, the, no, no, so I, I kind of wanted to get that out, right? Because it's very important. Uh, okay. Number two, you know, you go to for three, four startup meets in Bangalore, you will see 80% of the crowd is very different in each of those startup meets. You go to even if you go to an other spam retreats, you can probably bump into more people than you. Yeah, you can raise a, 50 million dollars in other spam retreats. No time yeah, at all. Correct. Absolutely. I mean, here 80% the audience is repeat. Yeah. I mean, you go to an Imagine meet, you go to a TCA meet or you go to some Thai meet, etc. The same guys you are seeing. So, I mean, we, we, we just don't have uh, the, uh, the second, you are talking about old money. Bangalore too has some old money, but fellows like Brigade Prestige and all have put in money. I mean, they have also set up funds. There are fellows with old money who have set up even family offices in Bombay also. I, I mean, Godrej has now teamed up with Spring Marketing, right. which is, uh, man, Godrej is as old money as you can get. Marico too is not new money. Asian pains. I'll being a little all. diplomatic, uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, also coaxing a lot of the old money guys. You know, somebody from Murugappa group like Arun Venkatachalam has to run to Bombay to do angel to investing, do right? He couldn't do it sitting here so easily. Uh, uh, I'm being, I'm just mentioning names so that see, this is in the spirit of our trying to provoke the ecosystem. No, that, right? that's that's a message okay. I wanted to get across. I, I'm not and trying I'm to happy be, that I'm Arun. I mean, Chandu did it very well. Words of anybody or saying, I'm just trying to say, listen. There is money. I mean, you can certainly put 2 to 5% of your investable surplus into a high risk thing like uh, promoting entrepreneurship. So that's my humble submission. Arun, you want any quick comments or you're generally in agreement? Fair enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stated. Okay, fine. Fair enough. So yeah, your, your, uh, your turn about your fundraise, your experience being in Chennai, was it a handicap uh, or any, any other perspective that you want on funding? Yeah, so not the gender um, angle, I'll come to that later. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's been extraordinarily difficult. Uh, you know, let me just uh, be, you know, I would uh, love to go Rara, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, but I think because of some of the num reasons that, that you mentioned, um, uh, one, I think one handicap, even though we are very proud of our mission, that we, you know, 98% of our customers are women, um, um, you know, and also almost all of them have household incomes less than 30,000. Now, uh, you know, a couple of things I want to highlight. Uh, even in general in the startup ecosystem, I would say uh, that there are probably less than 10 serious startups operating in this customer segment. Now we have to change that. You know, if, uh, you know, we have to achieve the objectives around inclusion, uh, around all the variables, income, caste, gender, all of those, certainly we need more entrepreneurs working on this segment. And it has never been easy. I think in any city, you know, whether you go to Bombay, whether you go to Bangalore, you go to Chennai, uh, this segment is not glamorous. This segment, there is no belief in the customer segment. People believe that these customers will not pay. They will not pay for services. Actually, the truth could not be further from this. Our experience is completely different. Uh, I would say that people who are at a disadvantage actually don't take, you know, cashbacks for granted. They do not expect 
uh, that they will not pay for financial services, that they will not pay for advice. They're ready to pay a fair price. Uh, that has been our experience. Our unit economics have always been strong. But the brand of this customer segment is not great. And it's not easy to raise, raise money uh, at all. And we've really got to change this. And I think that this is true for the startup ecosystem uh, universally. It's not a Chennai phenomena. I think we have to change it everywhere. Um, because, uh, you know, we are so-called credentialed entrepreneurs, right? Second-time entrepreneurs, older entrepreneurs. We are not coming out of college. We started four years ago. Uh, and we find it so tough. Honestly, I, I don't think, you know, uh, you know, even a university graduate, a postgrad with stars in their eyes, I don't think they stand a chance, honestly. Just, you know, I don't want to be negative, but I think I'm saying it because I think we have to change it. Um, that's number one. Two, uh, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, being in Chennai has been an advantage from a talent perspective and from a retention perspective, but certainly not from a capital perspective. Uh, because, uh, you know, like you said, there aren't any local sources of capital at all. Uh, on the other hand, you know, I see, uh, you know, uh, that there is this amazing Tamil diaspora, uh, which, is, which is sitting out there, which apparently wants to do a lot, especially for inclusion. They want to give back uh, to the country, to the state. Uh, how do we channel that? Uh, that was one of the thoughts. Um, uh, the the second thought was, you know, how can perhaps, uh, uh, you know, institutions uh, like Startup TN also partner with uh, development finance institutions to be that catalytic layer because we need uh, startup funding, not just, I think, here and for inclusion, not just at an earlier stage, we actually need it at later stages as well. Um, you know, I think given the current funding environment, global recession, looming, etc., I don't think anyone is out of the woods. I think we, you know, so I think, uh, you know, some of these do need change. So the takeaway is being in Chennai, raising money is difficult. Okay, so the, invest the investment bankers are not doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> One quick question to both of you. Uh, I, I agree that lot of the, uh, there are not many funds based in Chennai. But if there's a good idea and if the promoter has the credentials, what stops our uh, the promoters from approaching a fund anywhere else in India or the world? So do, do, do funds really have a preference for startups based in their city? Is that... How can I work? can I take that question? Yeah. Uh, that's that's not the issue, Arun. I think the issue is one about as you go through the funding curve, right? Uh, that continuum of funding. There are some stages of that funding continuum where the startup on its own legs and on its own merits attract capital, right? In the earlier stage of that journey, being closer to a funding source becomes a lot easier, particularly in the seed and the angel round, right? Because the mortality is very high in the seed and the angel round, you need people with significantly higher risk appetite to be supporting them. Because once they cross that hump and they come to be on their own, then the capital from elsewhere will automatically come to them. You don't have to, you know, go and reach out to them. So that's not a problem. So you do have unicorns here, right? So we have, I think, on, in last count, 36 out of the 108 unicorns here is, is what I uh, saw, right? Uh, so there are, uh, sorry, not 36, 36, there were 5 out of the 108 unicorns here, right? So, so there are enough number of companies here. But if you see, they are, they are struggling at the lower end of the journey. I think that is where the problem is. I see a few hands going up. Mr. Narayanan, I'll just add to, to that, something? Arun. Yeah. Just to uh, see, today, compared to say even 3-4 years back, my fellow angel investor seed funds will say the, the ticket size the, for, the, for a small seed fund was typically 3 crore, 3 and a half crore. In the last three, four years itself, it, the median has become 10 plus crores. So if you're raising at the early stage itself a 10 plus crore round for just making sure your idea can take off the ground, in Chennai, it's going to be difficult to mobilize that, that easily. In Bangalore, you can just do it like this, okay? No, but uh, I'm a startup from Chennai. 
does it stop me from going to bangalore and approaching a fund in it bangalore it becomes see it doesn't but i'll tell you see does the fund have a preference no, for uh, no, bangalore based no, no, startup no 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 but no, the fund typically unless even at the seed stage see there are couple of people from fund you know they give actually guys from chennai like even ramki more deals have been done by spark outside chennai than on chennai so uh, what do every what does everybody do they go to the watering hole they follow the money to say to paraphrase jerry maguire you know show me the money so you follow the money so that's the key thing you know so i think we have to make ourselves smell good so we'll take a few questions from the audience ms narayan and you had a point we will we will come to that yeah i'll, I'll you want to you want to grow us how you finished your funding yeah so uh, you know we did exactly yeah. what you said uh, you know we uh, we went where the money was um uh, um however i do think that there is a more systemic issue um uh, for uh, any startup focusing on inclusion uh, in general uh, because i think that uh, you know those who are interested in development like development finance institutions like government etc we need to build a bit better ecosystem there it doesn't um uh, naturally happen uh, so i think that you know um from our perspective our funding journey uh, you know has been uh, largely uh, around uh, impact funds um early stage impact funds uh, as well as uh, a few early stage dfis um uh, you know the mainstream i would say vcs etc are still circumspect about this customer segment uh, and and therefore to achieve you know uh, the scale that we dream of uh, we will definitely need more support uh, for sure uh, so uh, you know and these are investors you know across the globe so we we hardly even get investors in india uh, we actually get more interest from investors outside india for example europe has the most active impact investing forum most of our investors are from there mr narayan no just uh, <laughs> here okay uh, just to bring in a different paradigm all that i have heard so far i would call them supply side solutions supply side solutions because you have startups and you have a particular program to help the startups okay that is you are you are providing i mean you are waiting for the startups to come with ideas and you are providing support uh, can i change the paradigm because i see in tamil nadu there is a lot of demand side uh, opportunities that are possible let me give an example i spent a lot of time in Uh, Coimbatore and that entire area. I mean, there is a lot of demand for converting textiles into what we call technical textiles. Okay, the entrepreneurs are, as you see, old world. The entrepreneurs have built up their business from nothing to huge, but they don't have the technical capability of looking at the next generation. Is it possible, therefore, to create on to, to create startups in these areas? where there is a demand and there is automatically an investment possibility this is true in engineering there are engineering industries in that area where they want to go on to change in materials today our problem is you know my problem is materials we are living with 1950 1960 materials in all our engineering goods there is a demand so instead of looking at supply side looking at people who are coming to your door saying i am an entrepreneur can we go out and look at these what you call traditional existing industries and say what is your gap and create entrepreneurship there through the institutions and then fund it i think we'll make a sea change in this state within a couple of years so that's a relevant point sir and i think we'll probably touch upon it when we are talking of sectors and you know some of the other aspects uh, you had some question on funding not one i have five questions <laughs> if if you permit me to ask me can can we keep it to one we'll probably come back a little later okay first yeah. uh, let me go let me go to the fundamentals how do you define a startup why i am asking you this is the moment when we say startup everybody thinks of it and is he said 
one one side there is a demand another side there is a supply so i create a portal you know connecting these two people uh, suppose self help group is there in tamil nadu is it a startup or is there a definition of you know how many people or what should be the turnover so what is the uh, you know what is the definition of a startup in the first place yeah you can chandu okay there is a famous uh, quotation by a gentleman called steve blank okay mm -hmm. I, i must use that because very nice one he says a startup is a temporary organization in search of a sustainable and repeatable scalable business model okay okay so it can cover whole swath of things therefore it is nothing to do with it very good so for example chennai angels has funded somebody who makes cast iron cookware the only thing is they sell it online okay. and direct to consumer i think cast iron cookware has been there from indus valley okay it's so the company uh, is so named too <laughs> uh, in, uh, so. that that relates may, maybe one more question in that case why do you exit after some time see you are developing uh, you know uh, uh, you are nurturing you are developing a business okay you are scaling up and after that some time the people are also exiting you know is it not so why are we doing that so that's a good question i think one of the challenges that we are also talking about is different kind of funding models the current funding model that we have for early stage investing etc is early investors come in usually they get replaced by later investors so imagine devaki as early investor and yashoda comes later you know so somebody keeps uh, it keeps morphing like that so we are looking like that for more yashodas and bigger yashodas that's the classic model finally ending up in ipo or strategic investor that's the classic no and also just to add to what chandu is saying the the outlook of an investor in terms of time horizon and the outlook of an entrepreneur in terms of time horizon are quite different right an investor is there to take return out of his capital right so and typically private equity funds are 10 year funds so at the end of the 10th year they have to willingly return money back to the people who gave them the money so you know to mix up entrepreneurship with the the timeline of a capital provider might be you know comparing apples and oranges sir so i will come back to you sir with some of the questions uh, gopal you had a question okay you uh, highly commendable that these initiatives for startups and funding is now happening the question i have is that as chandu mentioned 80% of them will fail and i think he was being generous in my opinion it's higher than 80% what happened and this is government money so the equivalent of cag or the equivalent of questions being asked in parliament for something which is very natural in the startup entrepreneurial space may not be looked at properly or looked at professionally by political circles by the accountants in the uh, ecosystem so what is your plan for that for handling that uh, arun if i may i'll slip in one question that i had okay, okay. Uh, this was around yes it's it's obviously a noble uh, initiative from the government right but hand to heart what is the state capacity to be doing this so if you can also blend that into your response that will be helpful uh, to handle failure or uh... No, no. To okay. even manage this whole thing, because this, this is this requires a completely different yeah, mindset, yeah. right? Uh, so, you know, given the, for want of a better word, an ossified nature of the state thinking, uh, what is the state capacity to be actually doing this? To answer your question, sir, uh, the first part of your question on failure, I won't answer for government. I will answer for myself as an officer. I am mentally prepared for hundred percent of this investment to be. failing and uh, uh, standing before cag that's good fantastic okay good. i mean uh, particularly in the funds like scc startup funds where we we can't go by uh, very uh, very stricter uh, standards in the first fund i mentioned on emerging sector seed fund i have a independent uh, investment committee so the responsibility doesn't directly uh, come to me i can always say a team of experts but scc startup we directly do it four officers take the decision but we are sort of mentally prepared for that sir secondly sir in tamil nadu we already have a culture of this the original venture capital company of tamil nadu was titco titco which started in the 60 ti tic was by lending sir lending but equity was by titco oh tic was doing equity okay 
Yeah, I, I, st I, st I stand corrected. I stand corrected there. So, TIAC and TITCO. Most of the investments, as we know, have been failures. Thankfully, we made a titan investment which made up for all the, all the losses uh, we incurred in other. So, so this, is, this is a repetition of what has been, which has happened today. We give a name like startup investment and all. But we have a tradition of doing this and failing and with the occasional successes. So I think uh, if CAG really holds me up, I'll talk to about all those precedents. <laughs> so we'll probably pause on... Uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, Your question. Yeah, state capacity. You want to answer? Yeah, please. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's all yours. On state capacity, state capacity is very limited, sir. Uh, uh, that is why we... Uh, even to raise private money in the emerging uh, sector statement, our capacity is limited. Uh, therefore, uh, all these organizations... In, Tansa, we already have a CEO from the private sector. TNFMC, we are in the process of getting a CEO from the private sector because we believe that these are not uh, things which IS officers are capable of uh, do, uh, doing. We don't have the sector uh, expertise. But we want to do a beginning to set a template to uh, so that uh, uh, other organizations, other impact funds feel inspired to support the startups we are uh, uh, supporting. and. Uh, to make a beginning and hand it over to somebody who, who is an expert who can take the work forward. But state capacity on these things are quite limited. Yeah, and, and uh, I think the eloquent testimony to it is uh, Arun sitting here in this panel and engaging with the ecosystem. So I'm sure there is, there is, he is speaking his mind and he is speaking indeed the truth. Yes, is it, if it's yeah. related to funding, we'll take it. Otherwise, we'll probably take no, it. No, uh, this is with respect to uh, Startup TN. I'm a startup founder. Uh, so, say what I am seeing in the press on a daily basis or till now is uh, uh, inclusivity that even you spoke right now. And uh, I see that uh, about uh, 10 startups getting funded uh, of 15 lakhs each. Now, I the moment I get to see that, I see how can each startup get same amount of money. Like say, for example, one could get 20 lakhs, another could get 10 lakhs. Why would someone, why, why would there be a democratization of 15 lakhs to 10 people? Uh, is it by model a mistake? This is my question. It could, I could be ignorant, number one. Number two, now we are all, uh, at some point in time, we are touching upon the fact that there is less number of entrepreneurs, less number of startup. Now, if that is the case, then the startup DN mission, should it not be a case wherein we need more startups and more entrepreneurs why are we even starting inclusivity discussion here? Why should there be a SEST fund? Why should there be a discriminated uh, say a caste fund? Or why should be women-centric fund? Uh, now say I am a startup founder, I need funding. Right? Now I don't fit into any of this. I am neither a woman, I am nor a SEST, nor a, uh, any inclusive, gender is male. So I see that uh, there is uh, no scope for me to uh, approach any particular door to seek funding. Number two. Number three, there was one post saying that uh, office space could be given for startups. I felt elated to see that and said, okay, fine, let me apply. When I get into it, it says uh, your company should have been registered on or after a particular year. Unfortunately, I registered it a year before. I am unable to even apply for that. Now, uh, what uh, I could make a statement and convert that into a question wherein I could I would wish to see a startup or can this startup be like this wherein you provide you said encouragement capital. Can you provide encouragement office space? Now, I also posted a tweet tagging Mr. Um, uh, Sivaraja and uh, the uh, Udainidi Stalin and Stalin etc. saying that MRTS spaces in the city, MRTS uh, railway stations huge spaces available. Can we have converted them into a office space? Or can we provide mentorship to units? Can we do, instead of doing, yes, we should do 10 early uh, seed funding. Can we do one or two late funding also? Can we showcase that? Can we, can we be gungo about getting two or three people uh, showcased and said that I have created one unicorn? Let's, can we change the lens of Startup TN from the usual uh, caste based, uh, boat bank based, uh, democracy, uh, democratization based or inclusivity, let's do business. Uh, I, I, I somehow, I don't, I'm not sure if I made sense. I leave no, it no, there. So, you asked too many questions. So I don't know if I can answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. 
but i'll uh, i'll answer you the mo I, what i feel is the most important of your uh, uh, or most sensitive of your questions even when you are struggling to increase the numbers why are you looking at inclusivity i think that is your uh, first is that nothing excludes you in any way even if you don't fall in any of this category you are still el eligible to apply for tan seat get that uh, 10 lakhs you are still eligible for the emerging sector uh, seat fund you are eligible for all our programs except probably scst startup fund and uh, the women programs which you are going to start so 90% of our programs you are still eligible for why inclusivity i think uh, it's it's a constitutional mandate and uh, as citizens of this country we have a responsibility to bring everyone up together if you look at the statistics now i'm not going to scst i'm also secretary msme if you look at the uh, some of the subsidy schemes which we are uh, uh, dispersing scst is constitute 20% of the state's population whereas some of the past statistics indicate that the amount of subsidy they get is in the range of about 7% isn't it like too disproportionate so these are things the same happens with other uh, sections and uh, women it's true minorities it is true so as a government uh, we have the responsibility we are not willing to compromise on that so that would be part of tansim's uh, tansim's agenda the third on uh, incubation space that's an excellent idea in fact i got your mail uh, uh, we are working on converting all the uh, this mrts space to commercial commercial spaces it is a part, as you know mrts is a partnership between indian railways and uh, the government of tamil nadu so it has its own processes we have to get a, pri a ppp partner to develop it and then convert it to office space but not waiting for that we had already announced in the last budget about creating an incubation space specifically for uh, startups which uh, the building is now getting ready in sholinganallur so once that is there we would tansim itself will provide subsidized the incubation space in fact many of the organization many of our academic institutions like crescent and all offer uh, uh, subsidized uh, incubation space so i uh, so that aspect of your concern is uh, uh, addressed i think i would have addressed at least 80% of your uh, absolutely questions. I yes. just want to add, uh, add uh, one quick fact. Uh, uh, you know, fifty percent of India is women, but five percent of uh, startup funding goes to women entrepreneurs. Even though women entrepreneur-led companies have performed better uh, than the average, uh, so there is. Uh, you know, I think we have to accept that there have been biases in society that have. made it more challenging more difficult uh, for women to come up and therefore uh, honestly i completely agree with you and in fact in tamil no no i'll give you some statistics anand if you're keen uh, uh, from what i gathered from a recent study by ynos i don't see tilai here who's from the iit madras uh, department of management studies uh, tamil nadu has 576 women led startups and 3654 where one co-founder is a lady right uh, but uh, we can't pat ourselves in the back so quickly uh, for the simple reason that maharashtra has 11000 women led startups and bangalore has 6600 and delhi has 6900 so that's that's from a very very recent study from uh, ynos and the amount of money that has been raised by them is of the order of about 3500 crores by about 124 so there is money flowing but there is no specific uh, you know preference which is what we are trying to create so on that note i think i want to segue into you know one one another area turn around time between the so called application and the getting of the funds what the time span tan seed would be about 4 months the first installment though 10 lakhs 15 lakhs we recently increased we have to implement first we give 5 lakhs then after spending 5 lakhs is the next 5 lakhs given so that takes care of your question also sir that why everybody is given 10 lakhs more like a price money and based on need you reach up to 10 lakhs yes there is one hand going up there yeah, yeah. hello can you hear me sir yes sir yeah i am raguveer from zolvet i am a ca cma and cpa i have been working with startups recently for the last few months we we've been helping a lot of startups to you know uh, 
make their pitches with uh, VCs and private equity firms and trying to mobilize funds, help them with their litigations and uh, regulations and compliances, etc. One, uh, I understand that its funding is very important when it comes to the startup ecosystem. And it is the VC-backed funds or the PE-backed, sorry, VC-backed startups or the PE-backed startups that are willing to take much more risk and are able to scale up much faster compared to the bootstrap startups. And we are able to see that we reached the 100 unicorn status during the pandemic era in 2021 when we had excess liquidity in the market, when the funds were available at low cost. But now there has been a global turn and that the funds have become much more costlier and we are seeing central banks increasing the rate and people pulling out the money from the markets. You know, it's becoming the cost of the funds is increasing and people are losing their risk appetite to earn low uh, rate of return. Where do we see the private participation given that, you know, you already said that the state's ability to mobilize funds is limited given our own budgetary constraints. What measures does the government think, government of Tamil Nadu or from an India perspective also to mobilize the private funds to have the private players set up the funds here and probably look, you know, make it much more lucrative for them to fund the up and coming startups which they feel are viable. You want to take it around because it's not the government's job to fund startups. I think they are just, they are doing something, uh, yeah, they are doing something out of their turn to kind of encourage startups. So please don't put the ball back in the government's court, expecting them to hold your hand throughout the journey. It's not the government's job. Let's be clear about it, right? Uh, so are, we, have, are we facing a funding winter? Yes, we are facing a funding winter, right? Uh, so, startups should recalibrate their lifestyle, should recalibrate their growth, growth plans in order to face the reality of what is in store, right? The deal volumes are coming down, the deal cycles are getting extended, and the ticket sizes of each transaction is coming down materially, right? And I can say that because I do it for a living. Uh, sir, actually, and I'm I think Krishnan I've done it long from, enough you know, also. Sir, I'm Murli Krishnan, I'm working in a software company. Sir. Can I ask one question? Yeah. Uh, sir, no, actually, do you have sir, my question to Mr. Arun Rai? So, do you have any plan to incorporate anthropological mindset in pro, program in higher secondary education undergraduate students by doing trial and error methods, sir? And then, second, beyond the VC and capital funds, do you have any skilling and upskilling anthropological programs to identify the challenges and pain points in business and technology platforms? Like, you know, uh, your margin is my opportunity. That the third one is, do you have any? strategic plan to equalizing the capability rather than equalizing the opportunity. You didn't tell me I have to face so many <laughs> questions. <Rari. laughs> I told you what questions you'll face from me. I didn't budget for this. Yeah. So you're trained as a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer one of the questions. Probably the second or third we'll have. We will take it in course of time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, now we view including you know innovation, not really startup, but innovation is important to be included in the curriculum. So, this year we started what we called uh, with partnership, uh, not with by Stansim, by uh, Entrepreneurship Development Institute, which is also comes under Government of Tamil Nadu, in partnership with the School Education Department, started a school innovation development program this time. All higher secondary schools, that's 4,000 higher secondary schools, 4,127 to be precise, uh, higher secondary, government higher secondary schools, UNICEF prepared a curriculum, they were the knowledge partners. They prepared a curriculum for innovation, which includes a lot of problems drawn from the syllabus itself. And uh, once a week or twice a week, the students are supposed to work on those uh, problems. This is the model Delhi also adopted. In fact, we studied Delhi and uh, adopted it. Uh, from this. So that program has started and uh, uh, then there will be district level co competition, state level competition. So state level competition is yet to happen. So we are trying to instill a culture of innovation in, in the syllabus in at the school level. Just to add to you, there are organizations like what many of us are involved in called TAI, which have regular programs. You have something called a TAI Institute series for existing businesses and entrepreneurs. There are also outfits like YES based out of Madurai, which do similar programs. If you join something like TAI, there's also a very excellent thing called the Personal Transformation Board, which is for existing businesses, which is now touched 51 such boards. So there are multiple uh, resources available. So you don't have to really worry. And there are also MBA today in Innovation and Entrepreneurship, MBA IEV, which is there under the AICTE. That's a new kind of program which is focused on innovation and entrepreneurship as part of the curriculum. There are also studies in, oh, sorry, separate programs in colleges and like you said, in schools. So lo there are lots of things today happening. Yeah, there's, there's one question. It's on yeah. funding, uh, George? Yeah. Joseph? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Basically, uh, it's, it's, 
it's a more macro question, you know, like in the sense, uh, we're seeing globally that there's a financial, what do you call, winter. And what I'm trying to say is that in the in that particular process, do we expect a VC, I mean, there is a VC winter. Will, will the nature of VC funding change? No, not mm -hmm. just ticket sizes. What I mean to say is, is there a kind of a trans transformation which is bound to take place? And I think the question is actually, you know, directed to Chandu. You know, because you, you're two diametrically opposite positions. One is, you know, market oriented and the other is, you know, bottom up. And right in the middle is Arun Roy. Actually, the best great answer is Ramki. Because he knows... <laughs> no, no. Is, are we facing a funding winter? The short answer is yes. Right? Uh, now, it's more to do with the mindset. Because from what I understand, as per the most recent statistics I have, there is $3.7 trillion of dry powder available across a variety of asset classes. I include everything from buyouts to early stage to PE to growth capital. So, across the entire spectrum, the global dry powder available, which is the technical terminology for amount of uninvested but raised money sitting with the private equity or the investing community is 3.7. India's specific uh, funds have raised $17 billion last calendar. Ram, the, the, so, the, there is money available, no, right? No, the, I mean, the fact that, the, you know, uh, globally, there's a surplus, surplus of capital is no. So, there is, no, no, Jacob, I think the money is available. The question is, are they going to flow out of the tap as easily as they flowed in the last three, four, five years? The answer is no. I think we are already seeing the taps getting tightened, right? The, there is only drip feed of capital. So, I think it's imperative for the startups to recalibrate their way of uh, approach to funding. Because there is going to be, they are going to pick and choose. They're going to pick and choose on size. They're going to pick and choose on scale. No, I'm asking something slightly. Is, I mean, is the nature of opportunities different? The nature of opportunities are also different because a lot of them are going to pivot. And I was intending to ask Suchirita that question because I don't know whether you read the, the famous Silicon Valley uh, angel right. investor Gokul Raja Raman's interview a couple of uh, maybe a week back in Economic Times. He internationally VCs and uh, early stage investors are actually asking startups to return capital if they are not able to find a product market fit within the desired period of time, right? This was not the case three years back. The rope was long. People allowed you to experiment. People allowed you to pivot completely, you know, 180 degrees from what you were doing earlier. But now I think people are saying return the capital if you don't have a business model. And, you know, I want you to kind of, you know, talk on that in your from your own uh, investor experience, Sucharita. Yes. Uh so, I, I think uh, a good entrepreneur pivots anyway uh, in response to product market fit. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, our own business model has evolved significantly, uh, but largely more organically rather than, um, you know, uh, thankfully not prompted by investors. No. Can I interject? Yes, please. What I'm asking is not, you know, pivoting. What I'm saying is that overall, I mean, say in a macro sense, as the nature of opportunity is changed. I think so. So I think the nature of, you know, for example, earlier uh, from VCs, a lot of people used to ask us the question, you know, why aren't you spending more on customer acquisition to grow faster? And as a sort of uh, an entrepreneur with you know, perhaps just a more sustainable mindset, I couldn't, you know, I just couldn't do it. I, uh, you know, uh, even if there was money on the table, uh, I couldn't get myself to say, okay, you know, buy your way through growth. It just doesn't, it didn't seem sensible now, but it was the norm. It was definitely the norm. Uh, a lot of companies uh, grew very fast in that manner. And then, of course, it depends on whether you have even more funding available to uh, finally you will have to have a sustainable business model in all states of the world. But I think what has changed is that I think most investors now realize that you need to focus on not just, uh, you know, vanity metrics like customers, but also revenues, also unit economics, the customer at a unit level must be profitable. Uh, the customer acquisition costs cannot uh, be sky high. They have to be justified by the revenue. I think in that way, it has fundamentally changed and many, many businesses that were viable before 
will not be viable uh, today, primarily because that has changed. But I think you no. will know that better. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that perspective. We need to come back to Tamil Nadu because it's about startup TN, right? So let me try and bring it back to TN. Uh, Arun, one question. Um, you know, we have this constant debate about Chennai versus Bangalore, right? Uh, I think the Prime Minister would have solved one, one element of the debate a few hours back with the inauguration of the airport, right? Uh, and I'm hoping that that will no longer be uh, a variable in the equation. Uh, and Sucharita, in her initial narrative, spoke about how, you know, easy it was for people from different cultures to come here and talent has not been a problem for her and it's a great place to work. Another great lady entrepreneur from the city who is not here in the audience, Ashwini Ashokan, who runs a company called Match Street, then tweeted a couple of days back talking that even if I were to restart all over again, I'll start only in Chennai, right? So there is that, that side of the equation. Now, how much of this, you know, quality startup coming out of uh, this city and the state uh, is an issue with this perception about Chennai being a, you know, bad city to live, it doesn't have a social life. You are giving out enough resto bar licenses, I know that. Yeah. But but beyond the resto bar licenses, you know, what what does it take? You know, are are we, I mean, there is element, there is a skilling element. So, can, can you talk a little about that? You get a drift of where I'm going. And Chandu, you know, from a second stage funding perspective, how are you looking at it? I'm honestly intrigued because uh, till recently I believed the problem is with resto bars. <laughs> 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 like many of us probably. But I think that problem is getting sorted. And uh, otherwise, I, I mean, I'm also an outsider to the city, but I found the city very uh, welcoming. And uh, even for expats, uh, let's take the manufacturing sector, the, the Japanese, the Koreans, who are all here. I found, I mean, when I've been interacting with them when I was in my earlier posting in industries department, I found them, they're quite comfortable with uh, Chennai. So, uh, so I, 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 I'm quite intrigued to why we say that uh, Chennai is not a, uh, is not. After the old industry, where they are expanding, you yeah. need to talk to Malika Srinivasan, you need to talk to Wheels India, you need to talk to all the they are all going outside. I agree, sir. I, it's a fact. No right? investments, R&D, everything is outside. What is the reason, sir? The reason, I'm intrigued of the reason. I know the, the fact is, of course, is there. Startups also, it's going to Bangalore. So the question is, what do we do to correct it? So I think there is, there is that, that's an elephant in the room, right? Uh, I mean, we, we spoke of funding, VC is not being here. So the other big elephant in the room is people not wanting to come here and work, at least from a perception standpoint. Chandu, do you see that as a reason when we evaluate uh, second round funding and so no, on? I mean, I spoke before I came here, I also spoke to some other people who are in the ecosystem. I mean, uh, you know, we see, like I invested in a couple of startups and after a point in time, they had to break up the operations at the very least to part of it in Chennai, part of it in Bangalore. Okay, they're definitely, that's one point. Some of them move completely to uh, another city, maybe outside the country even, which is a completely different picture. But for example, you take even electric uh, mobility, at least two startups from IIT Madras have gone out of yes, the city absolutely. to Bangalore. And the more successful okay. ones. And the more okay. successful ones, which have raised significant amounts of capital. If you ask them why, I mean, Rajan and others would know even better, yeah, they will say the following, that certain kinds of talent in higher levels of design, uh, design across the board, engineering design to graphic design to UI, UX design to blah, blah. Many of the guys don't want to come here. People in digital marketing or marketing, you know, even many years ago, when Hyundai and Ford were set up here, after a few months, the marketing departments ran away from Chennai and based themselves in Delhi or elsewhere. So, yeah, and the research went off to this thing. So why, what, for me, the strange part is, we seem to be like New Jersey with respect to New York. Now, uh, if you go to Trenton in New Jersey, it says Trenton makes the world takes. But we have become like the back office stroke the factory. Okay. Where all the more glamorous and the better or the higher value added things seem to be shifting out. I do not know why this is happening. Even guys who are based, who are originally Tamilians or from Tamil Nadu, like you know, whatever, are moving out and setting up shop. They don't even look at Tamil Nadu as the first port of call. I'm very happy Sucharita is, a, is an outlier that way, but a lot of other people haven't looked at it. What are the reasons they say? I, huh? Sorry, yeah, I, I, I just, just want to add uh, just super quickly that I think 
Chennai's brand is really not great, oh. and uh, which we, which we do need to correct. It just happened to be that you know, I mean, I think some of the more open-minded people who are more neutral would <laughs> are, I think, uh, you know, get over that brand, right? But but there is a you know, like so many people asked me when I was moving here, why are you moving to Chennai? Um, you know, won't it be tough there? Uh, people from Chennai said, don't you hate Chennai? <laughs> like literally, because people are so apologetic about the city. Uh, you know, they're expecting you to hate it. Uh, so I, I think one, you know, we can't be so apologetic. I, I think, you know, like I was literally like the biggest brand ambassador for Chennai, I think. You continue <laughs> to be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing is, the br I think we need to make a significant effort to also change the brand. I don't think it'll happen on its own because it's a legacy, right? I mean, we, we're carrying it. So let's point, take a look. I, I agree that we have to hard sell our uh, brand. But what, what is that problem? We are, what is what should we convey? What is the problem we want to address? I'll just give you a small it's not, example. It's not cool. It's not cool. Can somehow. I? There is a problem. I mean, is, no, it's not cool can, as a city. The thing is, whether no, nowhere. Can, can I? Mother Lalji. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you're talking, <laughs> see. Uh, if 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 there's you know chaos in the world now at the moment, a big reason is because of technology. And this startup seminar did not have one word about technology. Please explain. No. You know, we'll come to that, Jacob. Uh, Madan Lalji, you have a question. See, we have been comparing Bangalore, Chennai, and all. One thing is we are ignoring Hyderabad, which can be by 25 on the maps. We'll forget even Bangalore. We'll start talking Hyderabad. Forget that. No, I think what you wish you try to do. If Oregadam or Tamil Chennai can be Detroit of India, correct? Coimbatore can be Manchester. Hosur can be EV capital. So that was the government's vision and trust. Probably government has not put its mind on this. So there has to be someone who wakes up the government and says, look, now forget this brick and mortar. Come to this area. If it starts, then it will build the ecosystem. I'll give a simple analogy. Urugaltala will say, US is good for studies. Now you say Australia is good. Singapore is good. How do you get that ideas or how do you get that news? Ten people say, today go to Singapore, today go to Australia. That's what she said, brand building. So I think it's a time all the people have to sit together. The politicians, the bureaucrats, the academia, the industrialists. And they have to find out what they want. If you really find that purpose, means will follow. That's what I understand. There, there are a few hands. What I see is Chennai so, uh, so near. No, if it is a statement, a we can take it offline. Is there a question? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a question, right? So how can we leverage the proximity of Bangalore to develop right Chennai and right? I can develop, government is doing a phenomenal job in developing Hosur as a manufacturing base. Is that what we can do to uh, take it to an advantage? We somewhere we need to accept the fact that. Bangladesh has a great funding environment. How are we going to leverage it? It's it's because uh, it's, you need to be happy that it's not somewhere far from Tamil Nadu. It's, it's so close. Right? How are we going to capitalize it? Fair Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make a point. Okay. Is uh, I don't fully agree that uh, Chennai is not such a big uh, engineering design center. We, we have quite a few big engineering design centers in Chennai also. To just give you a name, Ford has a very big center. Vistion has a very big center. There are quite a few big centers. Maybe Bangalore has done more than Chennai and Chennai has missed out opportunities. And Chennai, we can still set up such uh, big design centers because talent is there. But some of that leadership, that organizing, uh, big scale organizing cover uh, seems to be missing out Chennai. No, so that is the main reason. Just I to supplement, sir, I, I agree with you, sir. Today, when we go for uh, investment promotion, uh, visits outside. Earlier, it only used to be attracting manufacturing investments. But today, GCC's Global Capability Center is very much part of our uh, presentations, how Chennai is doing. And we try to attract more and more investments in the GCC space. So that is one way we are addressing that issue. So uh, Arun, uh, you know, we have, we have been putting a lot of blame on the government. We have been saying this is not there, that is not there, so on and so forth. So should people like me, Chandu, and the rest of us here who are probably active in the uh, ecosystem be looking at ourselves in the mirror? Uh, are we not doing enough as an ecosystem to join hands with the government to kind of... Because Bangalore has done a phenomenal job, right? Yes. Uh, whether it is catalyzed by the government or otherwise, you have people, you know, talking 24 by 7 about startups, about evangelizing the city. 
I mean, we don't see that decibel level in Chennai, honestly, right? Uh, there are a few of us who, in, you know, street corners keep murmuring, but I don't think <laughs> that's going to make a difference, right? You so, yeah, we are, we are probably it's a beginning. So, what do you expect as as a principal policy maker for the startup mission for the state? What is your prayer for the ecosystem? I want everybody in this room to be our brand ambassador. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. But it, the reality is what it is, Jacob. I think we can throw these no, numbers. Not, uh, not yeah. True. yeah. No, no, we can carry those on offline. Uh, so, it, I think it is quite interesting. At least I enjoy doing it. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know about the others, whether we inflicted pain on you. Uh, but but uh, thank you, Arun, for, for being so candid and so open with uh, your thoughts and perspective. Thank you, Sushadita, for being a Chennai evangelist. And, uh, you know, Chandu is a good friend, so I don't even have to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, this is, I think it's a generational problem. When we were in government, we had the same spiel going around. Where people used to say, you have the IT corridor, you have the IIT, you have the Gindi, why don't you create a Silicon Valley? I mean, these are not things which are created. I think it takes a lot more, the culture, the risk uh, taking ability. And so many other factors, and I think we've made a beginning in identifying a few of them. I think this conversation will go on. And uh, let's hope we get more and more sessions. And my duty now to thank Ramki for very ably uh, steering this conversation. Thanks, Arun, for coming down at our request. And we hope to see you more often in our forums. Surcharita, he has, you he has promised me to be there at the next one. Wow, <laughs> good. Already, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> Thank you, Surcharita. I think when we were setting up the IIT Research Park, I was on their board, and we used to wonder what is going to happen. Is it going to become a piece of real estate which is going to be prime, or are we really going to get you know entrepreneur? And seeing you, I think. A lot is being done and a lot more uh, from the IIT Research Park. More strength to all of you. And Chandu, for your gems, which came from time to time, I think it enlivened the uh, whole process and uh, discussion. So thank you very much. So just a few announcements. Our next event is on the 22nd. It probably will be at the Loyola College and it is on the ONDC. We have the CEO of the ONDC coming down and I think that would be a very interesting uh, conversation again on how uh, the digital networks are taking on uh, a new shape and there is more competition in that space. And after that, we have a completely different topic which we are going to discuss back here. And this is a dialogue with uh, two Tibetan Rinpoches. And that would be a completely different take. I am sure many of you would be there to listen to the uh, very uh, venerated speakers. And on probably the 12th of March, we have May. the background story. May. May. May, sorry, sorry. 12th of May, we have the background, literally the background of Natanate. Natanate. Natanate, the Oscar winner. I mean the background because we are going to get the person who selects these backgrounds. So, Natu Natu in Ukraine was selected by our own very Chennaite and he will tell you about all the movies that go international from Chennai and how he goes about selecting those locations for these movies. So, I think we have a very interesting uh, lineup of events. We would request that all of you grace these uh, these events and encourage us to do more and more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.